Okay, I think I lowered the bit rate and things like that, so hopefully this works <laughs> without having a bunch of errors. And I'm not sure how the video is going to turn out because obviously I see what I see, but I don't see what you guys see. Um, and it might not be that fast, so I'm not sure. But I will just do some minutes of testing to see if this video turns out. Because I know this automatically records, I guess, to Twitch, so then I can go back to my account afterwards and check to see how the video is and if it's acceptable, I guess you could say. Um, so what I was going to do is I'm probably going to stream on Monday mornings um, and do like stationary housekeeping kind of things. Um, I really need to go through like a huge decluttering kind of phase because there's just too much stuff and like they always say, um, your your physical space, you know, it reflects like your mental space. So if there's just so much stuff everywhere, it's just going to cause like such... Um, anxiety in a sense of just having so much stuff and not knowing what to do with it. And one of the great things about journaling and notebooks in general is that you can just organize things onto pages, right? Like put them in there. So I was going to do this stationary housekeeping kind of thing where um, I'm just going to go through all like the papers and ephemera and things that I've saved and just put them into journals. Like they don't have to be perfectly decorated pages um, they can just, you know, they can, they just need to be like aggregated, you know, into pages. So this is sort of like a junk journal that I wanted to make at some point. I had all these papers and I put also like, um, envelopes and like weird, you know, different kinds of paper types in here. I don't know if I actually want to use all of these though, because if I'm going to be making these journals, to just sort of like archive papers, should I really be using like these? This is like sort of a neutral-ish theme. Um, but I know that it can be really boring to use just like white, you know, plain white paper. So maybe, I don't know, should I do this one first or this one? This one is like completely, I guess I can do this one and it would require a lot less paper because this this notebook doesn't really have a lot of room to grow um, so there's not much you can do there let's see so I have a lot of like random papers that I must have used this like I often use white paper under something to write on because I'm a pretty heavy like I'm heavy-handed um, so sort of like um, a cheap pencil board which is just cardstock, white cardstock, and put it under a page. And so I have a lot of these just all over the place. And you can see that then they get stained, like the ghosting of whatever it is I'm writing or whatever I'm doing onto it at some point. And so technically these papers, like you can't actually use them for something. But if you're into junk journaling, which technically is using like junk mail, or junk papers and using them as like base pages in your journal so that they don't have to be the you know pristine white papers that are like expensive and fancy um, but I have a drawer full of well not a drawer I do have a drawer full many drawers full of paper and stationery that I need to use up but I also have or, this crazy like file folder of a million papers and things that I keep like sticking papers in saying like I'm gonna use it I'm gonna use it and then it just piles up like, forever um, so I really should just pick stuff and use it so that is what I'm gonna do like just sort of go through a bunch of papers fold them all together get them together so that I can bind them into this journal um, and once I have that base journal done then it's sort of like a junk journal where you can paste in more things use washi tape put in your ephemera whatever it is that you want to keep um, and that's usually a lot of the journaling that I do um, when it comes to what I would show or share 
because it's more like art journaling or collaging, like just for fun kind of stuff. When it comes to actual like writing, when people say journaling, like dear diary or, you know, writing your thoughts and things like that, um, I do do that, but they're more like morning pages style and I don't do any decoration in them. And part of the reason is I don't really keep them um, like the morning pages types. I don't really keep them because my handwriting is horrible. You probably won't even be able to like read what I wrote in it. Over time, I just get rid of them. It's it's more like the process of writing that is what is helping you, not that you want to keep those journals, you know, forever. Not that it's wrong if you want to keep them. Like, I personally don't. The one that I do keep is, um, let me show you. I have, whoa, I have my Hobonichi. That is where I do personal journaling. And I do keep these, um, but they're obviously, like I said, very personal and I don't actually journal, you know, that people can see and I don't show anyone. So that's not really like, even though I do the practice, I, it's not what I would show. What I would show is the random stuff, <laughs> like art journaling, fun stuff. Like, I don't know if I showed this before, where... Um, you know, I'm putting down my favorite stickers or favorite like stationery and quotes or like random things that I save, um, like Instagram, you know, screenshots or something like that. So this is more of like just like fun journaling time kind of stuff. Um, and again, your journaling style can change over time, so it's not going to be the same. And I think sometimes we get really caught up with wanting to have a certain aesthetic. And obviously this is the whole Instagram thing, right? You want things to look a certain way. Um, but it is it is a problem when it becomes like that's the goal rather than the process of like actually just having fun and doing your thing. So like I really struggle with that in like wanting to be refined or curated in a sense and know like have this sort of sense of security in what I'm doing, but at the same time exploring and constantly changing because it's it's just never going to be the same. Um, so like I do a lot of just really plain like collaging kind of stuff. It's not like anything fancy. Um, I used to do a lot of art journaling in terms of uh, if you look at the art journaling like tag on Instagram, you'll see it's very like paint filled and mixed media kind of stuff and I used to do a lot of that but then now it's just um it's not very convenient because like the paint and dirtiness and everything <laughs> not that not that it's bad you know what I mean um it just became something that was very difficult when I started um when I had my kids and like you can't you don't have a lot of time that is for yourself you're always multitasking and running there and helping someone and coming back so like things that are very um, dirty in that sense with your hands is not very easy to do unless you have like really dedicated studio time and my kids are older now so I could go back to that but I just never you know it just I just moved away from that I guess more than anything so let me get a bunch of papers so I have a lot of um, if you guys have never this is another stationary box that you can um, subscribe to it's called it's from oh dear and they have a oh it's the the subscription for this stationary box is, is called the paper gang and you get every month you get a bunch of stationery and it could be like a notebook a ruler a pencil case um, writing utensil obviously memo pads post-its like a mix of things every month and it changes um, what you get every month because it's a different artist that would be doing the box each month. So there's a lot of this kind of stuff that is out there that is very cool. And I usually subscribe for like a year and then I'll like change to something else just because I wanna try different things. Um, right now I'm subscribed to Sticky Club for the stickers and pip sticks. Um, so a bunch of like sticker stationary things to just sort of build up my collection. Um, but then at some point I, I do have to like take a hiatus kind of thing because it just builds up so much. Like suddenly you have so many supplies and it's like, oh my God, I need to use them rather than hoard them. Um, and these papers are from um, Flow Magazine. It's a magazine 
um, from the Netherlands, but they do have it translated sometimes in English and I think sometimes in French. Um, we've been trying to get it here in Italy, but it has not happened yet. Um, but basically, they're, they have really beautiful, like this kind of style, um, I don't know what you would describe it as, but very like illustration heavy and um, paper lover kind of things. They actually have paper lover books where it's like a giant magazine like this, this thick, that is just filled with illustrated papers and paper crafts that you can do. So it's great for kids as well as for any of us who love journaling because you could tear out the pages and basically use them um, in your journals. So this page is obviously small for this um, this journal, but that's okay. Um, one of the things, this comes from sort of like the junk journaling world where you just combine a bunch of papers into one journal. They don't each page have to be the same size, right? It can be a huge mix, at least if it doesn't bother you. I find it to be a lot more um, inspirational and easy to start journaling when you don't have white pages. Um, like it goes both ways. Sometimes you want those pristine, perfect white pages and the grid lines like in the MD diary or um, bullet journal kind of style because it's just so neat and minimal and um, you can, if you like that style, that would really make it easy. But sometimes I just want to, I really like this. Why did I like this? Oh, maybe because of this quote. Um, anyways, but sometimes you want, you know, something that is like already, you know, when you have a pattern background, it's almost like it's easier to start because it's already been started for you. Similar to like when people splash um, paint colors on a white page so that they already have a start to it and it's not a completely white blank page where they're so, you know, where it can be very intimidating. Um, so I'm just going to grab a bunch of different papers, fold them up, and bind it into this journal. And obviously you can trim with like a paper cutter or you can, you know, this is like a giant poster piece. Do I want to rip this up? <laughs> I don't know. I guess so. What's the point of, like I said, I need to get away from this whole hoarding thing. Like you think that you're going to use these supplies for, you know, quote unquote, a better project or um, something more worthy. And then you just end up never using it, <laughs> basically. Um... And again, the thing with junk journaling is that you're supposed to, it gives you like this freedom to like use everything. Like you don't need to cut off the barcodes and things like that. It's sort of funny how like sometimes we want to be so neat and proper with our journaling, journaling, but then at the same time we collect ephemera and like coffee coasters and like, you know, placemats and all kinds of things that we keep from our travels. Um, even if we're not traveling right now, but you know, the idea is similar, right? Like when you see something that looks cool and you want to keep it. So I'm just going to rip these all up and include them as pages. Um, and these are, like I said, smaller pages than the A5 size, but I'm going to have A5 papers um, in between these little ones. So you have all these like little flaps in between different pages and then once I have the journal done then I can include lots of other little tidbits in it and journal in it and so like on my desk I have this little heart tin which is really cute this is Virgola is an artist um, I'm assuming she's Italian <laughs> but um, she's an artist on Instagram and you can see all of her artwork there um, and they had this tin but I have this tin on my desk with like little tidbits and things that mostly it's my daughter that gives me these little things. She obviously has inherited like the journaling gene, but she's very artistic and she'll make me like little things and I don't have the time to like put them in my journals immediately, but like I, you know, keep them here to be like, okay, I want to keep these. I want to journal them or include them in somewhere at some point. Um, so that's what that is. Hello, Charlene. Thank you so much for dropping by. I am just um, 
trying to get a hang of this whole streaming things and I changed my a bunch of my settings so hopefully this is like working now I'm sure the video is not like the best quality because my internet is not that fast but at least if I can you know stream <laughs> then I would be able to share um, and I'm just sort of like making a, a junkish journal kind of thing right now to start off like this sort of stationary housekeeping project to try to declutter all the stuff that I have and um, put them into you know book form and put them in my bookshelf rather than having like piles and boxes of crazy you know stationary supplies and all kinds of things like I, I feel like we're always decluttering right like there's so much stuff um, and we can't help it because we want the paper and the stationary things so I'm going through my stash and just like have all kinds of different you know papers um, so I think, yeah, this is from Flow Magazine and um, papers, stationary things that I have in my stash. And some things are really old. Some things are, you know, just printed papers. Does this fit in here or is it too big? I don't know if I like this if it sticks out. Um, yeah, junk journaling is so fun. And it's funny because there are so many terms, right? Like people will say, art journaling, mixed media journaling, or like stationary, minimal chic, or um, junk journaling. Like, I know that they have like specific definitions like of where they originated, but to me in the end, it really is the same thing. Um, it's, it's just journaling, right? You're putting things in book form and the style that you have can change over time and it can be whatever you want. Yeah, Flow Magazine is um, is from the Netherlands, right? So they have like English, but I really like their Paper Lovers book when you want like a whole bunch of um, illustrated papers and use that for your journaling. So it's really fun. Um, so I do have a bunch of like old magazines and things. I also have Uppercase Magazine, like a couple. I stopped like subscribing to a lot of magazines just because I have built up a bit too much and I need again to declutter and work through all my stuff um, so I'm hoping I can stream every Monday just because it works well for me um, to do this whole like stationary housekeeping and journal making and like sort of archiving things so I'm just gonna get like a bunch of papers together and bind them together um, really simple uh, and I like having these pages with like weird you know multiple sizes and like a huge mix I'm not really good at keeping like a, a theme obviously because these are like all completely different but you know whatever um, so I also have a lot of like printed papers that like I mean to use and then they end up piling up so it would be good to just use them rather than letting them pile up. Um, oh, so you can actually read the original Flow magazine. That's great. I actually have some of the original um, Flow magazine, but I, obviously I can't read it if it's not in English, which is sort of funny. But then I realized they have an English version, so you can buy the English version to read. Um, but either way, the graphics is so beautiful that, you know, you don't have to be able to read it to enjoy it. Um, I know that a lot of people do that for Asian magazines or like Japanese magazines. They can't actually read it, but like they just love the magazine itself or the aesthetic of the book. And so they buy it just for that reason. Um, so whatever, you know, whatever works for you kind of thing. It doesn't have to be that you can read it. So I have a lot of printed papers, but they're most, I, I don't know why. I, I usually, oftentimes I print them as a square. So I guess that doesn't work very well. Actually, I guess it doesn't matter because if I folded this, it just means that there would be some white space in like in the journal. But obviously, I'm gonna paste stuff on it, so why would it matter, right? Um, so, like for example, I can put these different papers in and sort of sandwich in other kind of papers in between. Actually, I could fold this another way. This is in the back, but if I fold it this way, it means that the center of this book is like this. Yeah. So at some point, I obviously I can organize these papers as well in whatever order that I want it to be. And it's so fun. I really love 
making books, um, it's such a fun process, but then it gets a little crazy because you make way more than you could ever use. <laughs> so it's something to like keep under control. I know that um, for Flow Magazine, um, there's a bunch of us here in Italy who would love to have an Italian version, but obviously to expand a magazine to another language is like a huge, huge thing. So I don't know if it would ever happen, but there's like this movement and a bunch of fans that always ask and um, like ask the creators of Flow and, you know, they've interviewed them before and sort of try to get that to happen. So maybe one day, but... Either way, I really love their special editions, the, pl the flow like paper books. Um, you can use them just as, you know, pretty paper kind of stuff. So I have all these like random collage sheets. I thought I had more like full page kind of stuff that I could use. It's like it's such a big mix. What am I going to do with these things? This is the problem of like when you get print happy sometimes and then you start printing out a million things and then you don't realize what you're going to use them for. <laughs> I guess that's a problem. Um, but yeah. Here, this one is generic enough that I can use it or like cut these out. Like that's another good thing to do too, like when you or like watching TV or something, or watching videos, like to sort through your stuff and see what, if, what you want to use them for. I used to do a lot of um, like pen pal writing, stationary kind of stuff, so I have a lot of stationary printed type of paper um, to write on, but I don't do that anymore because our mailing like mail here in Italy is pretty bad <laughs> and a lot of things get lost or um, they won't arrive properly and I always feel bad when people want to send me things because I always tell people to not send me things because it's just so risky um, <clears throat> or I'll have to pay like 50 but like okay not 50 but like 20 euro in customs or something it's just a huge um, pain, basically. Which is why I really like um, digital supplies, because they're digital files. You can send them to anyone as long as you could save to your computer and, um, and then just print whatever you need, um, which is perfect. Yeah, these are all from the Flow paper book, so, or paper lover's book, so that's like a good thing to cool papers to use. The sticker stuck on here. Ah. Plain paper. I just need to use all these things. I have too many papers. Oh, thank you for visiting my IG. Yeah, I do. I mean, it's such a mix. I like start and stop a lot. Um, I come from a graphic design background, so that's what I do like for work work is graphic design, but pretty like boring stuff. And I say boring, meaning like it's not, you know, it's not like illustration creative um, <clears throat> that you see on Instagram. It's like corporate, you know, kind of brochures and things like that. So maybe not the most interesting. Um, and, but you know, that's like the day job kind of thing. And I do like illustrating, but it's a start and stop kind of thing because it just, I think I don't really know what I want to do. So I guess you could say it's just a hobby. Um, and I get into these like moods, right? Like there'll be times when you just start, like you create like a whole series of art and do a bunch of stuff. And then like, there'll be another time where you just get caught up with life. So you end up like not doing it because you know, it's not my, you know, paid job. So you're like, quote unquote, not forced to do it. So it's really always been like difficult for me. But for example, like these designs, like this is my own illustration these are like my own designs like this whole <clears throat> um this like graphic um what's the word tree pattern is um is my design you know a lot of the stuff is my design and I usually post it for my 
on my Patreon feed where I share like special pattern papers, but you don't have to be on my Patreon. If you just go to my blog, there's like all kinds of free printable papers, <clears throat> stationary papers, pattern papers on my blog. Um, there's so much there, like there's, I don't even know how many, you know, hundreds and hundreds of posts, so you can definitely just go there and get free stuff. Um, because when I first moved here, it was like so difficult to get like just scrapbook paper um, and, you know, digital, you know, digital printables was like lifesaver because that's like a way that you could get supplies as long as you, you know, have a printer, then you wouldn't have to like order things from afar and things like that. And there's a lot more access now. Like when I first moved here, um, I moved here like more than um, 10 years ago now, but in a tiny small town in, in Italy. So when I first moved here, there wasn't even Amazon yet. Like there, we could not order things that easily or even if you could order them, it would take forever. There would be custom fees um, or the shipping itself would just be so much, right? So things that are very easy and normal to get in the United States, like I cannot get here. And obviously my family is from the United States, so when I went back to visit them, I could like get a bunch of stuff, but it's not it's not often enough, you know? Um, so that's why I really love digital printables because I just think it's so cool. You know, it's like giving access um, to a lot of people for certain things and you could duplicate and reuse them over and over again. Um, you can't really necessarily run out, right? Because it's something that you could use forever. I think I might have too many papers now because... Is this good? Because this... What was I going to put in? I was going to put it in this cover, um, which is just a piece of scrap leather with cardstock in the inside, like glued in, um, so it makes like a nice sturdy cover. But there's, I didn't cut it with enough like width, so when you put a lot of papers inside, it's just gonna like hang over. So unless I trim it, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but this is like a leftover piece. I guess I could sort of do it like that. I'm not very exact when it comes to book binding. I have learned it before, like the proper um, hardbound book binding and all kinds of things. But um, when I do it for myself, it's like I don't measure, I eyeball everything. And it's like good enough that it's not going to fall apart for my uses. I don't need to be that um, intense about it, I guess you could say. So if you line up all your papers... I just bind it all in one one kind of thing. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Um, so it looks like I'm not getting any e errors, so I think it's okay I can stream in this fashion now. So thank you so much for checking it out. And so I'm just going to make this. I'm centering sort of the pages, and you don't have to center them. Obviously, they could be all like at the bottom. Whatever it is you choose as long as however you organize your pages make sure that the holes that you're going to poke to sew the book together is going to hold the pages um, like sturdy in their place so that they don't fall out or rip or anything like that um, but this is pretty simple because most of the pages are even if they're not perfectly aligned it's almost the full width of this page so as long as I keep like the holes in the middle it'll be fine and normally when I bind these books I will punch like five holes but it's not really necessary I mean you could just do three like pamphlet stitch it three like this and it'll be fine like I said it's not you know it's different from binding say like if you're a bullet journaler and you're gonna be carrying your bullet journal with you you know all day every day for a year you're gonna need something that is very sturdy but most of us that are journaling and if you're like at home you know you're opening and closing your book a lot but then once you finish it it's gonna be like archived you know as long as it doesn't fall apart like that's a good enough quality so I really like binding my own journals because you can use all kinds of different types of paper and use up the paper that you have so I use like an old um, paper catalog at, at, as the bottom to help me bind um, and again if I was being 
proper about this. You would like clamp together your pages properly and like have a guide and measure all the holes properly and all that kind of stuff, but I'm just very, very loose about this kind of stuff. Let me think. Where do I put it? I guess you could. But like you can use, let me go grab something. You can use like clips like this to, you know, clip things together if you're afraid that it gets misaligned. Because if your pages are misaligned or you punch your holes misaligned, then when you use thread to sew your book together, it will, you know, you can tear the pages and that might deteriorate the quality of it. So you want to be as exact as possible. Yes, Charlene. Yes, it's great to find other European streamers because we would be in the same time zone. I think in the US now it's like, you know, everyone's sleeping. So no one is watching. Um, but at some point I hope to find like a better proper schedule and work it out. But Monday mornings is good for me also because it's like relaxing time to just do a bit of you know, quote unquote, mindless kind of stuff rather than being so stressed out. See, this doesn't even reach. What is this? So what I do is I usually stick it in here to punch through it. And right now I have also the cover. I really should do it separately, but I'm lazy. And I just want to do it all in one go. Um, so I will punch in the middle and this hole is pretty big so I guess it's not really necessary but this is what I have this is an awl which is like a metal pointy stick basically um, so you use it to punch holes for book binding and I'm just gonna punch three holes and the reason why I have this paper catalog is, is just protection for my table that's what I use it's like you can have like an old phone book or something a lot of people use an old phone book or something like that for gluing as well because you you know how you when you glue something often you you go off the page and it makes everything dirty and your table crazy um, so people will there's like so many pages in like a phone book or an old catalog right you would glue on top of this and just flip the page and you have another surface and you can keep going like that so it makes it easier okay so I have this like linen string that I'm gonna use. I guess this is not gonna be as sturdy as I think. Oh, I forgot to get a needle. Where is my needle? So I have this giant tapestry needle, I guess. Um, obviously you can buy actual book binding needles and use that. But I usually start in the bottom because I like having the knots um, when I bind a book in the inside, I don't know why, inside bottom, I've just gotten used to it that way, so that I just keep doing it that way. Oh, what am I doing? Wrong string. This is on the roll. Put this away. I'm gonna make such a mess. I don't know how people, you guys, like, you streamers, you guys are amazing, like how you can multitask and talk and read and do what you're doing all at the same time it's like most definitely a skill I think people always think that like streaming or YouTubing or whatever is like oh it's so fun and glamorous and like you're not really working but it's like everything it's an acquired skill right um, so it's not easy to do so what I'm doing is I ooh, I punched the three holes all through to the cover as well and I put in I started on the inside bottom came out went inside the middle here now I'm going back on the top so I'm just going in out in out in order um, of the holes that I've punched and there's only three so this is like a pamphlet stitch kind of thing you could have punched more holes like the bigger your notebook is or the more um, strong or sturdy you want it to be you can obviously have more different holes like an odd number of holes so that where you start you would come back out um, but in this case it this is like junk journaling style this is good enough um, so I put it back in and when you bind a book in this sewing method just make sure you don't poke through 
the, the thread that you already have here because that would weaken the thread like you're breaking the thread, you know? They're next to each other, they're not like through. But see how here I totally did what I told you like not to do. <laughs> and what happens is that over time you can be like, you'll break your thread. So that's why you don't want to do that. But again, depending on how you use your journals and how, how much strength you need, it's okay. So once I come back out this way, I am just going to tie a knot here. Sorry if you hear all kinds of noises. It's like things like that. <laughs> 